Welcome friends to another 40k video. What happens when an ancient loyal dreadnought wakes to find its Primarch is a traitor? Let's find out. We draw on the short story, The Ancient Awakes by Graham McNeil. Three of the Thousand Sons initiates are on the site of the drop site massacre of Istaran, though they don't know it's that planet yet. One, Vistario, had a vision and Magnus told him to follow it. And they discover lying on its side partially crushed by a giant spar of steel fallen from above with the shattered outline of a dreadnought. Dust and ash lay thick on its adamantium sarcophagus. The colour of its armour all but obscured. One leg had been sheared from its body and its left side was buckled inwards so deeply that the flesh within was surely dead. Its weapon arms, a pattern assault cannon and a splay clawed power fist were aimed skywards as if this ancient hero of the legions had sought to vent his fury towards the heavens with the last of his existence. The dreadnought lay upon something half buried in the rock of the cavern floor. Its surface heat burned and unrecognisable. More cables snaked from the wrecked starship and were hooked into the object's underside, as well as to the war machine, and then it grabbed one of the thousand suns waking from its slumber. It took the thousand sun in its fist and threatened the others. The dreadnought says that only hate kept it going. The styro confirms who they are and that the thousand sons endure. The dreadnought does not know about their betrayal, he realises, but it does recognise his evasion. My like or dislike, for the truth is immaterial, said the dreadnought. Truth is all we have. It is our shield against falsehoods. When facts can be twisted to become weapons, nothing good can endure. The Emperor taught me that, but too few of us took the lesson to heart, or understood how vital it was. And the Dreadnought goes on to say, I am he who remembers. In the past, this Dreadnought would oversee Emperor's children recruits, seeing them from that stage up to being full members of the Legion. He compares himself to Magnus's Legion, and the Staria knows this Dreadnought's name, and it confirms, I am ancient Rylanar. And then they realise they are at the, the site of the drop site massacre. The Thousand Sons had heard about the fate of Rylanor from Lucius the Swordsman. The Dreadnought confirms he was trapped by a shockwave. He explains a sonic weapon crippled him. And he says the distress beacon was a lure. And then a voice cuts for me. It says, isn't that right, Rylanor? Fulgrim emerges as if he'd been conveniently waiting off stage. And Rylanor just says, at last. The Primarch was an abomination, even by the standards of the warriors who had seen their own fathers hideously changed, we're talking about Magnus there, by the transformative energies of the great ocean. The Staria felt ether fire pulsing within Fulgrim's body, his ability to manipulate its energies massively powerful, yet unsubtle swords glittered at his midsection, and his eyes roved the chamber, taking the measure of the presented people before him. How long had he been watching and listening? In the centuries since the Battle of Terror, the Phoenicians' behaviour defied rational understanding or a sense of predictability. Magnus himself had given up any form of prognostication concerning his brother's actions. How could Vistario even begin to predict what Fulgrim might do next? Ancient, said Fulgrim, sliding over the floor with grotesque motions. You look terrible, a disgrace even. What has become of you, my Primarch? said Rylanor, his horrified disgust clear even through the degraded quality of his Vox Caster. You are a monster, says the scrap of ruined flesh maintained by grotesque machinery, said Fulgrim, circling the four of them. His pale eyes were pearlescent orbs without pupils, soulless and devoid of anything that had once made him great. They regarded the warriors before him with only passing interest. What does Magnus send his broken sons to Istvan III for? Did you learn nothing from the wolves' destruction of Prospero? My hermit brother should know by now that his meddlesome curiosity only leads to disaster. The stereo fought to find his voice, always a problem in the face of a Primarch, doubly so in the presence of one so altered, yet even though Fulgrim's appearance had changed so terribly, Pangs of longing stirred in Vistario's breast. We heard his message he managed. Too bad for you, said Fulgrim with a grin, taking in their predicament. Mershid still hung like a limp fish in Rylanor's grip. Vistario was covered by the assault cannon 
Maktar stood immobile, his weapon trained unerringly upon the dreadnought's sarcophagus. The Phoenician approached Bailenar. So, old friend, you have my attention. What is it you want me to hear? And do try to make it diverting. After all, you've had millennia to perfect it. Bailenar dropped Murshid and used the wheezing grating limb to push its carapace upright. Vestarius saw the muzzle of the assault cannon track away from him, following the Primax movements. He eased his mind into the warlike enumerations, letting the power of the great ocean into his flesh. Be ready, he sent to his brothers, a flash of thoughts only. He felt their understanding and flexed his psyche, in readiness for wielding his power. Conflicting visions pressed upon the meniscus of his mind, shredding bullets and mass reactives, fire, and an unstoppable tide of virulent destruction. The omens are not good. Dust and rubble fell from Bailenor's arm like sand in an hourglass. Fresh portions of the smashed object beneath the dreadnought's body were revealed and humming power cables ran from Bailenor's sarcophagus to an opened control panel. Vistario felt his blood chill as he finally understood what it was. Has it truly been millennia? said Bailenor, his voice stronger now, coming from a time long ago and filled with infinite sadness and patient regret. It has, said Fulgrim, moving closer. Think of all that time wasted, all the glory unearned, all the victories denied. Bailenor gave another grating bark of laughter. Glory, you think I sought glory? How little you understand of your own legion. Yes, I have indeed perfected what I wish you to hear, said Bailenor, as Fulgrim reached out to him. And though I am sure you will find it diverting, it will not be me that says it. Fulgrim's grin faltered, as he too saw what the dreadnought's body had obscured. No, he said, as if he thought he could stop. What was about to happen with a word? Yes, said Rylanor, sending an activating pulse of energy to the armed warhead of an unexploded virus bomb. Vistaria saw the moment of detonation a fraction of a second before it happened. Instantaneously, he held a vision of the explosive spread of the life eater virus as it consumed them dissolving like frost before the sun he saw in this vision their doomed bodies transformed into replicating flesh refineries in which the hyper evolving virus strands mutated and found ever more inventive ways of destroying organic material all of this he witnessed in the space between life and death the most fleeting glimpse into an inevitable future but a fleeting glimpse was all an adept of the covid day needed Actar, already in the blunt, pugnacious enumerations, Actar was unleashing his power, even as the detonation circuits of the virus bomb triggered. The casing shattered as the explosive heart of the bomb cracked open, and the isolated viral compounds mixed in the precise amounts to catalyse the unstoppable reaction. Fire bloomed from the warhead in torturous slow motion, lapping round by another sarcophagus, like low-grade viscous promethium. I Cannot hold it for long, said Akhtar. His raptora powers stretched to their limits in holding back the explosion. Vistara reached out with his mind and poured his power into the warrior, feeling Mer should do the same. Fulgin laughed at the creeping death that slowly slid over the dreadnought's body. Is this it? You sought to draw me here to kill me? Bailenor triggered his assault cannon, but fast as quicksilver, Fulgin caught it and crushed it before it could fire. No, I don't think so, said the Primarch effortlessly ripping the arm from the dreadnought's body. Sparks flew from the ruptured limb, and Fulgrim gave the weapon a dismissive glance before tossing it aside. You betrayed us, bellowed Rylanor. Your sons, you led us here to die. There is no forgiveness for that, none. You must die by my hand. The Emperor's justice will fall upon you. Not even Fulgrim, the Illuminator, can escape the Life Eater. Fulgrim leaned in close to Rylanor and shook. You wish me dead? He said scathingly, pity dripping from every syllable. Why, because you think I betrayed you, the Legion or Rylanar? You yourself, you think I betrayed you? The thoughts are so narrow. If you could only see us now, how beautiful we have become. We shine so brightly, each of us a brilliant sun. Fulgrim reached down, sliding his bare hand inside a rent in the dreadnought's armour. He smiled, closing his eyes and letting his tongue slip across his lips. As he pushed deeper inside, Ah, there you are, said Fulgrim, as Rylanor's box castigrated in fury, wet and wriggling. I can feel your panic. It's delicious. Rylanor's power fist swung around, 
bathed in fire. It struck Fulgrim on the shoulder, but Akhtar's psychic force was not simply confined to the life eater's detonation. Fulgrim laughed off the sluggish attack, and one of his low arms drew a glittering sword of alien origin. The blade sliced in a cruelly precise arc, cutting through the fibre bundle motivators and servos, while Noah's arm fell limp at his side. Vistario watched the viral fire spread over the dreadnought's body, slipping inside his buckled plates of armour. Rylanor did not care whether he lived or died, only that Fulgrim went with him. Do not do this, barked the dreadnought. Why not? I am your master. I can do whatever I like. I can crush you or I can raise you up. Return to the Legion. Accept the gifts of the Dark Prince and you will walk at my side, clad once again in flesh. You can be anything, old friend. I will sculpt you into something beautiful. A god to these mortals. Never. All we have left between us is that we will die together, roared the dreadnought, the upper portion of his carapace burning with blue flame. I am Rylanor of the Emperor's children, ancient of rights, venerable of the Palatine host, and proud servant of the Emperor of Mankind, beloved by all. I reject you now and always. Fulgrin laughed and said, I'm sorry, did it sound like I was offering you a choice? The Primarch wrenched his hand from Rylanor's sarcophagus dragging a sopping mass of fluid and matter with him. Glutinous ropes dripped from his fingers. He was like a midwife holding a mewling newborn. Ruptured cables spilled amniotic fluid, so stagnant it must surely have been poisoning Rylanor with every passing second. I will remake you, brother, said Fulgrim. You will be my crowning achievement. Though his body was little more than rags of wet meat, Vistario sensed Rylanor's horror at this violation. An inescapable destiny where he would become what he hated most. What do we do? The question was Mershid's, and the connection between the Thousand Sons was so strong that the Athanian's perception for emotion spread to all three of them. Vistario felt Fulgrim's infinite malice, his cruel enjoyment of Rylanor's anguish, and the helplessness of the Thousand Sons. The Primarch of the Emperor's Children reveled in his overweening pride, a trait Magnus had more than once told Vistario had been present long before his fall, but, but more than anything, stronger even than Fulgrim's spite, Vistario felt Rylanor's pride and honour, the unbending core of greatness that had set him up against his brothers, and seen him descend into obsessive madness beneath the surface of a dead world. Vistario took the measure of Fulgrim, seeing nothing worthy in him. His warriors felt the moment his decision was made. Primarch Fulgrim sent Vistario, Rylanor deserves better than you. The Primarch looked up, his once bright eyes now black and filled with the darkest poison. He deserves better than all of us. He raised his bolter and fired a mass reactive into the back of Actown's skull. The Raptor's head exploded, and with his death, the psychic force holding back the warhead's detonation ended. The stereo saw fire, and once more, all life burned. It took much less time for the Life Eater to burn out on Istvan's second death. His first ending had claimed 8 billion lives, snuffed out in a matter of hours when Horus launched his bombardment from the Ventral Spirit. With such plentiful mortal flesh to fuel the Barrow Killer's fury, the psychic screen was said to have eclipsed the astronomical in itself. A shadow emerged from the Undercity, a serpentine outline of cinders, held together by a web of never-born energy. Not even the viral toxins wrought by ancient science could all make that which the darkest powers of the warp had raised up. The Phoenician's form was already weaving itself anew, but his soul was broken, for no pain, no hurt, and no injury could wound such a being as much as of the, the denial of its magnificence. That was Rylanor's final victory. And I would make a note here that I think it was him denying Fulgrim what he wanted because he's so selfish. I think it was Rylanor denying the dark fit that he would have with the Primarch and the Empress children now that they'd fallen to the warp. I think that's his final victory. And that little observation, friends, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed the heroic stand of Rylanor against Fulgrim. But I do question why Fulgrim was there. He did conveniently appear. I would like a little more explanation on that. But yeah, let's wrap up this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.